Hello, I'm Blaine McCormick from the Hand Camera School of Business at Baylor University. Welcome back to the Colonial Business School with Dr. Benjamin Franklin, where we focus on Franklin's business writings and how they might apply to modern day commerce. Franklin's most popular publication was his Poor Richard's Almanac. Though he published the top selling almanac in the colonies, he did not hold a monopoly on the market. There were lots of almanacs, and almost everybody had one. In fact, I suggest that almanacs serve the same purpose as our smartphones do today. Franklin's 1758 Almanac and a popular smartphone are shown here to scale. They were roughly the same size and both still fit in the pocket of a man's dress shirt. The key difference between the two platforms is that Almanacs updated only one time per year when the next year's Almanac was printed. Smartphones, however, update any time they are used and the World Wide Web is constantly updating as well. That's a key difference, but let's look at some of the similarities. Most people already know that Almanacs had calendar pages for each month of the year. Here's a January calendar page. You can see the days of the month in the leftmost column. Further, reading across the page points out the notable events for that day. Though less personalized than the calendars on our modern smartphones, these calendars were very effective in helping colonial citizens organize their days. Further, some surviving almanacs show the owner's personal activities penciled into the margins. Also buried in the monthly calendar was a rather tongue-in-cheek weather prediction. Everyone knew that it was only a guess as the almanacs were printed and sold a few months before the year began. However, it was entertaining to see if the prediction would actually fit the day's weather. This, of course, parallels our modern weather apps on our phones like the Weather Channel. Let's take a closer look at two other columns on the calendar page. This column gives the time for sunrise, and the one next to it gives the time when the sun should set. On the whole, the two columns were remarkably accurate. In fact, they were far more accurate than the clocks and watches of the day. Colonials would set their timepieces to the sunrise and sunset each day. The clocks on our modern smartphones sync instantly like an atomic clock, and that's impressive. However, a good almanac was right twice a day when it came to time, and this was a huge improvement over previous organizing systems. Let's look at a few other pages in the almanac. This page shows a recipe to help provide relief from malaria. This and other pages were where people turned to find cures for their illnesses, much like we go to sites like WebMD. The back page of the almanac listed roads heading northeastward and southwestward from Philadelphia, where Franklin lived, and sold his almanac. Obviously, this was the colonial equivalent of Google Maps. At the top of that same page, the fairs were listed. You'll notice that most towns had two fairs about six months apart. Though we might be thinking carnival here, that's not exactly correct. Though quite festive, these fairs were actually where the colonial marketplaces, much like eBay and Amazon.com, met. Vendors and tradespeople from all around would gather to offer goods for purchase and, of course, socialize. Any casual reader of the almanac would notice an extraordinary amount of astronomical and astrological information. Eclipses were big events, but the location of the known planets were closely watched, as were the position and relation of various stars and constellations. Though a few folks might have believed that the stars controlled their destinies, most just wanted to watch the moving images each night. It's not too much of a stretch to say that this was their nightly entertainment, much like we would watch television programs on Hulu. Finally, Franklin included lots of useful and entertaining advice in a preface that he usually addressed to the courteous reader. This preface from the 1758 Almanac became his famous The Way to Wealth essay, sort of Poor Richard's greatest hits all rolled into one. It was reprinted thousands of times all over the world, sort of like going viral on YouTube. Part of the way to wealth also served as the basis for Lesson 4 of the Colonial Business School, which is housed on YouTube as well. Although there's more inside the almanac, we'll stop here, but note one final similarity between almanacs and smartphones. I'm sure that more than one colonial parent complained that their child does little but look at their almanac all day long. Thanks for joining us for the Colonial Business School. To learn more about Franklin's business years, see my book, Ben Franklin, America's Original Entrepreneur. It's a modern adaptation of Franklin's autobiography written specifically for today's business reader. 
or to dig even deeper into Franklin's life and legacy, join the Friends of Franklin at www.friendsoffranklin.org, an organization dedicated to fellowship, learning, and the spirit of Benjamin Franklin.